talk about something a little different from everybody else, um, podcasting, um, and kind of the power of audio storytelling. Um, I'm going to walk you through what we learned and the insights um, that drove the success of the podcast that we did together called The Confident Wallet. So welcome to the audio revolution, right? We all know this. Podcasts are really booming. 44% um, of the US population has listened to a podcast. And the listeners aren't just everyday people. They're more influential. They're more affluent. And now they're venturing into voice, right? So by two, 2022, 55% of the US population is predicted to have a smart speaker in their home. So audio is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's exactly why the Washington Post newsroom has really embraced podcasting. So starting with our global audience, um, which is 91 million US monthly uniques, 25 million non-US monthly uniques. Um, they've really invested in a podcast penetration, 14 podcasts, 15.9 million podcast listeners, 20 million plus downloads. So it's a huge audience. And now they're really venturing into voice, one of the leading news brands doing news briefings on smart speakers with tailored versions of our most popular Washington Post newsroom podcasts. Okay, so. How do you, how do brands leverage this sonic boom? Let's start with yeah. what we did with T-Row Price. Yeah. So thank you. Um, so at the heart of the T-Row Price brand really is helping people um, uh, achieve their financial goals. And so the challenge was how do we get our personal finance, education, and advice to a broader consumer base? So there are a lot of ways we could do that, right? And you know, we're all well versed in multimedia storytelling, video storytelling, um, you know, AR, emerging media, you know, all different kinds of ways we could get that message across. Um, so there, you know, there's a reason that we leaned into podcasts and decided to go that route for these personal finance topics. And first of all, personal finance itself is personal. Right? This is about achieving your goals, achieving your dreams, taking care of your loved ones. There's really nothing more personal. And podcasting is the most personal of storytelling mediums. It's in your ear. right? It's literally on your body. Um, and it tends to be an educational, not promotional kind of medium. People are leaning in, downloading the podcast, opting into it. It's kind of the opposite of disruptive. Um, and um, it tends to be a place where you can really break down barriers, which was really important to T.R. Price. Do you want to speak a bit yeah, about that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, think about it. What are the topics that are most uncomfortable? Money and finances, politics, and religion. So we wanted to make sure that we pr provided a really safe space, a conversational environment to break down barriers, eliminate kind of the tension around the topics of finances. And I'll, I'll add another thing. I think at T.R. Price, we recognize that when people are actually having the conversations about finances, typically they're in parallel with something very emotional. So think about those big financial decisions that you've made in your life. Um, things like getting married, having a baby, changing jobs. These are very emotional milestones for people. And so we feel like um, having some financial preparedness ahead of those financial decisions ensures that you're making good financial decisions and not impulsive kind of emotional decisions in the moment. And I think we also you know, really wanted to get diverse viewpoints um, out there, and a podcast is a really good way to do that. OK, so let me play the trailer so you know what we're talking about. This is a trailer for the season one. We actually have a season two out now, too. Welcome to The Confident Wallet, a personal finance podcast series from The Washington Post brand studio and T. Rowe Price. Join us for our roundtable conversations with savvy experts designed to enable you to make more informed financial decisions. My name is Lynette Kalfani cox I'm also known as The Money Coach. I'm the author of the New York Times bestseller, Zero Debt, The Ultimate Guide to Financial Freedom, and I'll be your host. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. So we're the trailer. Um, the reason we really wanted to get up here and talk to you about this podcast was because it was such an outsized success, kind of blowing through all of our expectations. And I want to talk to you about what we did to create that success. Um, so first thing we did was we had to find the right format and length. Um, we had to choose the right topics and get the right talent, reach the right audience, leverage premium placement, all about real estate, and we'll get into all of these in a bit. 
go beyond iTunes and make it social. So I'm going to dive in. We're going to dive into each one of these. So finding the right format, this may seem obvious, but you know, right at the beginning, you've got to figure out what's the format of your podcast. There are kind of an infinite variety of formats. Here are some popular ones. There's the one-on-one -on -one interview, right? solo commentary, um, nonfiction reported narrative, um, fictional podcasts, um, and then short form audio bites. Um, so these are some really popular ones the Washington Post newsroom has really delved into. Um, but for us, we felt like the right format was a roundtable discussion, where we had different kinds of experts having kind of an informal conversation that would feel very appro approachable and where we could get those diverse viewpoints in there. Yeah, and I think just the conversational, approachable space um, of the roundtable really lent itself to the topic that we were trying to cover. Hey, so. Um, you also need to hit the right length. So something that I found really exciting about podcasts, we, when we do video, we try to keep them pretty short, right? Like two to five minutes online. With podcasts, you can actually really delve into a topic. Um, the sweet spot is between 20 and 30 minutes, we've found. And this is also coming from our newsroom, sort of sharing insights across the, you know, those many, many podcasts that they're creating. Um, and, um, and this is kind of where you can really delve into the issue, but not spend so long that you're losing your listener's focus. Yeah, we like to say we want it long enough to be useful, but short enough to be memorable. And so striking that balance was really important. And then we had to choose the topics. Personal finance actually lends itself to a myriad of topics. We do feel like we could keep going with this podcast forever because of that. Um, but these were really client informed, which I think also really led to the success. Yeah, T. Rowe Price has the benefit of 1.4 million direct relationships with investors. And so we were able to kind of filter the topics that we were going to cover based on what we know our clients are interested in hearing about. And that was a really good starting point. And then we had to find the right talent. Um, and I think this is one of the main reasons that you ended up working with us is because at the Washington Post Brand Studio, we have access to kind of high level talent, especially you know, real thought leaders um, and leaders on topics like personal finance. Um, so that was a big part of what we were doing was bringing the right talent to the table. And you do want to find that right connector that connects you with the right talent for your podcast. Yeah, We wanted to make sure it was inclusive of the T. Rowe Price perspective but not exclusively the T. Rowe Price perspective. And so we wanted to have the conversation include debate and different perspectives for our audiences. So every episode had a T. Rowe expert and then third party experts as well. And I think that was very important for having it not feel too branded um, and also feel like you're getting these many viewpoints on the topic. OK, so reaching the right audience, none of this matters if you don't actually reach the audience that you want to reach. Um, and there was a lot of overlap here that I think led to this being successful in reaching that right audience. Yeah, our audience is the audience we were trying to reach is a somewhat affluent audience. Certainly, the Washington Post reaches that audience. What we found is that only 35, um, actually 35% were unfamiliar with T-Row Price, which was kind of a surprise to us. So we saw that as a huge opportunity to kind of scale into a space and among an audience group that was really important to us. Hey, leveraging premium placement. So this is all about real estate, um, especially on iTunes, right? You want to be within a feed that is already very popular. Um, you don't want to have to be like starting your own real estate, buying your, your own home all alone. Um, so um, that's very important that this was featured within the Washington Post feed on um, iTunes, um, and also that we filled a white space. And by that, I mean that Washington Post has numerous podcasts covering lots of topics from news and politics um, to society and culture, sports, but there was nothing on finances, right? So it was really this open space that T. Rowe could really own with the Confident Wallet. Yeah. And I'll say, too, from an alignment perspective, it was really important to us. Hallmarks of our brand really are independent perspectives, trustworthiness, reliability. So. The brand that we wanted to align with really needed to share those values with us, and the Washington Post definitely checked those boxes for us. OK, so we're talking about the iTunes feed. It's obviously extremely important, but you also need to go beyond iTunes if you really want to drive the scale um, that we were looking for. Um, so we did a whole slew of things on the promotional side. Um, 
We had a podcast series page that lived on WashingtonPost.com, um, and this is something that our newsroom does. Every, po every newsroom podcast has its own series page on WashingtonPost.com. Um, we actually saw a lot of traffic coming from that. Um, we had native promotional modules that ran within Washington Post articles, and those were targeted based on readers' interests in financial topics and also fitting this demographic of 100,000 household income and up. Um, and we did rich media ad units, so more creative ad units that did things like have audio clips within them that also ran within Washington Post articles and were targeted. And then we did off-site promotions. Um, Apple News promotion ended up being um, having our highest CTR of all of our promotions, which makes a lot of sense for podcasts, um, and obviously we promote it across all of the major podcast platforms, and then within um, one of the most popular Washington Post newsroom podcasts, The Daily 202, we had a promo within there, and then within their flash briefing for smart speakers. And we'd be remiss not to count on our 1.4 million customers at T. Rowe Price, knowing that these are topics that are top of mind for them, and they are very engaged in the category. We did a slew of um, promotions against uh, that audience, both kind of digi uh, digital, more innovative things, as well as sort of tried and true direct mail. Yeah, which we thought was really interesting. Um, you know, first of all, it was great to see a brand actually doing their own promotional efforts alongside of us. That does not always happen, and it really leads to outsized success when it, when it does happen. Um, but also that you did both very traditional means, I mean, snail mail, um, in addition to you know, digital and really forward thinking means of promoting. Um, so make it social. Um, so you know we did a lot across social to promote and saw a lot of traffic coming from social. Um, and you know we tested out a lot of creative, different kinds of creatives on social. You know from from little animated gifs to um, more static images to audio placements. Okay, so what did all this lead to when I said we have outsized success? Um, so actually a lot of metrics here really blew through all of our expectations, both in terms of scale, um, reach. Um, engagement. Um, we did a study around it and we found that the listeners of the podcast were inspired to learn more about these topics, to learn more about T. Rowe Price. Um, and then I know on your side there were some... Yeah, we had um, terrific client feedback on the podcast, um, good engagement among our client base, so, um, and really strong verbatims from them through our client set studies. Okay, so as we went into season two, there were some things that we learned from season one. We wanted to make sure we shared that as well, um, that we leaned into as we embarked on another season that launched about a month ago. Um, so one thing is to batch releases, and this is also something our newsroom does, but to release the whole season at once, so not in parts, because when people listen to one, they want to keep going um, and really binge listen. Um, we also leaned into topics that appeal to the masses, um, so topics that pretty much everybody would want to learn about, like getting started with investing, rather than topics that were more tailored to a specific group. We amped up with Apple News because it drove the highest CTR. And we did more alignment with relevant newsroom topics, like this article. Um, we went really big with homepage takeovers. And we gave a sneak peek on social, which I'll play right now. The purpose of this episode of the Confident Wallet podcast series is to make the leap into investing more digestible for rookie investors. Why should a person consider doing this versus savings with something safe? Safe, and I'm doing air quotes, begs the question, safe from what? That's exactly what I would say. I love that. Please be sure to join us for Getting Started with Investing. So that placement on social is just is right now driving the most social referrals. So that just told us like doing these behind the scenes little videos um, really get people interested in the topics. Okay, hearing the future, thought I'd never get here. Um, okay, so you know what are we looking forward to? Where do we think this is all headed? What might we do again together? Um, if we can definitely keep going with this specific Confident Wallet podcast in this format. There are so many financial topics yet to explore, um, but we're also interested in perhaps exploring those different podcast formats that I was talking about, um, venturing further into voice. I think there's more that can be done there, especially as the scale grows. Um, we're thinking about doing perhaps financial tips within, um, you know, running as pre-roll to Washington Post flash briefings on smart speakers in homes, and maybe even taking the show on the road, since this was a panel discussion. Um, we can drive more engagement, perhaps, by doing these live activations with it, where we have a panel in front of an audience, um, kind of hinging off the podcast. Um, yeah, so we're excited to see where we head with this. Yeah, I think we've been inspired over the last few days about um, things, we, we, other ideas where we can take this idea. So thank you. Thanks. Thanks.